Hey everybody, this is Pastor Michael at Ascension Lutheran Church in Torrance, California. It's time for another midweek boost. I'm going to read you a passage. It comes from Matthew chapter 23. And in it, uh, Jesus really uses some humor that I, I'd like to point out. Um, Jesus used humor a lot. And here he, he uses it in a way that's... Uh, really pointed directly at the scribes and the Pharisees uh, to make a point. He, this is in the midst of a number of uh, woes to you passages. And he, he says it again in verse 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and yet you have neglected the other weightier m matters of the law. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. And then he says, you blind guides, you strain out a gnat after swallowing a camel. That's the funny part. Uh, you can imagine what he means by that. Uh, that they are consumers, these scribes and Pharisees. They take, 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 and give very little. Um, that's what he means by swallowing a camel, but straining out a gnat. And he, he picks on them for getting very particular about elements of the law that don't matter as much as the more important pieces of the law, which have to do with faithfulness and justice and, and mercy and love towards others. You know, that's really what the law was all about, loving God and loving others. And, and your tithing it was one way of showing your love towards God. And, and that was an Old Testament prescription that they were to follow. And in the New Testament, you know, we don't have uh, the uh, command to tithe the way we had in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus has fulfilled the law. He has given him his entire self to God uh, as, he, as he gave himself up to be nailed on a cross so that we might be forgiven. In doing so, he, he paid the price for sin and death. And everyone who believes in him receives eternal life because of what Jesus has done. And so by doing that, he fulfilled the Old Testament law. And now in terms of giving, those of us who believe are called to give of ourselves out of joy and, and happiness and thanksgiving for what God has done for us. And it says that we're to give whatever we determine in our heart to give and to do it joyfully. Um, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so uh, that's how we're to live our lives now and to really celebrate love and mercy and forgiveness especially. Because those are the things that the scribes and the Pharisees didn't pay attention to. He's picking on them uh, for the fact that they would would count the grains of of cumin, and they would count their the grains of dill to make sure that they gave ten percent to the temple. But but when it came to showing love and mercy to others, they were stingy. And Jesus is calling them on it. That that's not true faithfulness to God. And so it is for us too. As Christians, we can sometimes get wrapped up in the do's and don'ts of Christianity. But what God is really concerned about is do we love others? And do we trust in him? Are we faithful do we have faith in, in the fact that God loves us and that he rules over us and that the things that he desires for us, he only asks because he loves us and that we can trust him on it? 
Yeah, that's, that's what really matters. Are we being faithful? Are we being trusting? Are we loving others? Are we forgiving others? Are we being merciful to others as God has been to us? This is essential Christianity. We can't take his love, this big camel of love, and swallow it whole and then show no love or mercy to others, squeezing out that gnat. We need to love others as he has loved us. That is precisely what he calls us to do. Have a great night, everybody.